Hello, it's Thomas George and welcome to this video all about composing film music. I've teamed up with Jonathan Armandry and this is actually a clip from our film music course. If you'd like to gain access to this course for only $10, full price is $120, then check the link in the description below. So thank you for listening, let's get on with the video. This session is all about putting it together. We came up with the themes in the last section. We know roughly what we're working with. Now it's just to look at timings and how we're going to craft these things together. So I've got a string sample loaded, cinema strings in Logic. Again, there are a couple of ways you can work. Generally, if I'm sketching, I'll just open a full ensemble package like this so I can have basses and cellos and everything. If I wanted to be a bit more detailed, I would actually load up separate tracks of violins one, violins two, violas, cellos and basses. That takes a bit more time looking at arrangements as well. I'm just trying to get a feel for what I'm creating at the minute. So we're going to stick with the basic full ensemble package. So generally I'll stick the metronome on so we can hear it playing, watch the movie and play with the themes that I've just created. So we'll start from the beginning. We'll put that first note that we wanted in. There's two E and the G. See how long I feel it works holding that down. And again, I can take my cues from the visuals. So there's this moment where he starts looking around. That might be nice to change the to the F. Drop out the strings. And this is all I'll do, play and watch, play and watch. Okay, got a decent amount of time there. How much, fur how further off are we from that scene change? Not too far, so I think we can get away with dragging that string pat out a little bit. So now I'll have a go at recording it. So I'm just going to watch through the movie a little bit and see how many beats and bars I think I should be leaving. And just making a mental note. So that first note comes in, maybe bring the second note in as we cut to his face on bar three. And bring in the chord pattern about bar six as we look in the car. And then back to the emptiness here. Back to, we'll cut out all the chords, start with that top note again as we cut to the back seat, a bit of mystery. We're not fully sure of the story yet. Descending down. And we talked about having contrary motion at this point, so we might bring in some lower basses, bring in the bottom octaves. Then we'll have a bit of a change of pace, perhaps, as he's walking towards her. Might change the chord sequence up a little bit. So I know I need to get to about 16 bars using the this chord sequence, twice around this chord sequence, which is a nice amount of time. Nice slow beginning to the film. The pace of the visual is slow as well, so that matches. Incidentally, I usually work with an 88 key keyboard to fit on camera We're using a smaller keyboard today. So I would normally, I can normally put in the low octave straight away. You have to do a bit more fiddling when you're with a smaller keyboard, but that's fine. We'll work with that. So now I'm just going to hit record. I'm aiming to be as accurate timing wise as I can. I have got the metronome on. I'm not just going to wing it. I think it's really important to work to a click, particularly when you're working in this type of way. It means changes are a bit easier. When we're adding effects, it's much easier as well. So yeah, record to a click. See how we get on. So I was obviously watching the film while playing that piece along and I got a feel for where things worked, where things didn't work. So now I'll just double click 
have a look at my piano roll and see if there's anything I thought needed to be brought in earlier or later. The handy thing is when you've got your movie here, anywhere you click with a locator, it's going to follow. So we brought that second pattern in. The problem with working with MIDI is you can't start halfway through a note. So you have to use your imagination to think about where those extra strings are. So I think I've probably brought these strings off just a little bit early. So I'm going to cross these over for an extra beat. I'm going to skip back and just going to listen to these bottom two. Make sure you start before the MIDI note. We'll just see that that comes off at the right time. I'm trying to make sure it doesn't have to be exact with these, but just it should finish roughly where the change of camera angle is. That's that's better. Remember, we still got this high note playing. And again, there's another cut here from the back seats back to the front seats, and that landed bang on a bar, uh, bang on a beat. So I might just pull these strings forward again, just so there's a bit more continuity there with the camera and the instrumentation. Again, I'm trying to stick with where beats are though. And again, I'll bring this back on beat bar two of, sorry, beat two of bar 11, because that was the exact changing point. Outside. And I'll double up this with a lower bass part to get that full contrary motion. Maybe add a higher string because we've got quite a long period here, four bars with, without any change. So if I bring in a low section to bring that contrary motion, bring in a lower uh, string part and also a higher one towards the end, then we'll have a bit more movement, keeping a bit more interest. So I can play that in or I can just copy it from another part. So let's watch that again. Was there a click time with a movement? Good. So bar three of this bar, I'm just going to copy this one down an octave. So I'm clicking and I'm holding Alt to drag it down to copy it. Handy little trick. Bring that into that beat. So now I've got the lowest bass coming in as well. And we'll drop a high one in, I think at bar 14. So we've got a bit. We hold up here. I'm listening to see which note I think might work. Using your ears is a really, really important part of this as well. So let's just see, go back a little bit so we can get more information. I think that works really nicely. Now we've got a bit of a cut, a bit of change of pace as we move to the next scene. So you've noticed we can be a bit fluid. We don't have to always fall on beat one of each bar. We can bring things in and out where we want. The, what, the viewer has a lot of information to take in at this point. They're trying to gauge what's happening in the scene. They're trying to take in as much information visually as they can. We don't want to bombard them with too much stuff orally. But likewise, they're not paying too much attention. So we can get away with pushing things forward or backwards a little bit. Let's have a look through that from the start with the strings. I'll turn the metronome off as well. That works really nicely so far. It's important to point out that I haven't planned any of this. It's not, I'm not using the same music that I originally wrote for it or anything. This is totally new. The original music was actually on the acoustic guitar, very much more song based. This is just another go at it. It might work. It might not. The point is that you're seeing the process we're going through. 
So we have the string parts there. Incidentally, I chose strings for their warmth, their humanity. Um, they've often said this, a, a string is a lot like a human voice. So it gives a bit of emotion to it. I'm thinking it's sounding a little bit um, dark, but that's fine for now. That, part of that's down to the, the actual composing. I'm going to open a new instrument and look at how we can add in the theme for our lead character. Now, one way of differentiating the themes is by having different instruments. So we talked about our male theme being along the lines of and our female theme. They're very similar, very similar note. Well, the exact, almost the same notes. One note difference between them and different order of notes. So we could think about different instruments for each of them. So I'm going to put the male theme on a guitar part. Simple guitar part, just an acoustic guitar. Sometimes you're working, when you're looking through your libraries, you see something and you think, oh, maybe that'll work. Guitar harmonics. And that works really nicely. So I'm going to stick with that for our male theme. Now we've just got to work out how we're going to place it in. So we want it as he appears. So I'm going to, again, I'm just going to play it, watch, play along, see where we think it'll fit. So really subtly, slower tempo than I'd initially written the theme as, but I think that works really well, particularly if we soften it. One thing that might not work, we have a string part joining at the same time. So we might have to readjust where that string line falls. I'm going to bite the bullet and we're going to record it straight away. And that fits nicely. You'll notice I did a bit of syncopation there as well. So with a click, syncopation means slightly off the beat. So bam, t bam, t bam. You imagine where that beat falls. Just adds to that. It gives it a bit more rhythm. Even though there's no pull, there's no click happening as the audience is listening, they'll you get a feeling for pace. And also adds to the uncertainty of the character situation as well. But I am definitely going to move that second string part. I think it's in the way of our theme. So I'm going to have a listen and see where I think it might fit. So I think coming in just after that last note, it's going to fit really nicely. Let's try that. seems to work well. One really important thing we spoke about a lot during the conceptualizing stage is to think about dynamics. It's really easy to get drawn into working with samples and just going with them, thinking that's how they are, not thinking about swells or anything like that. Most samples you can control dynamic with using the modulation wheel. You can set that up or you can key in automation to control the dynamics with swells and things. Some dynamics here is really going to help. So swells, starting quiet, getting louder, going quieter again, sort of depending on what's happening on screen is really going to heighten this bit. And we look at that a bit more during the, when, when we put these onto high quality samples, then we can start playing with those dynamics a bit more. So it's very simple at the moment, just strings and acoustic guitar. When you work with an independent project, it's really important that the music does reflect what you're working with. I see it quite often in student work that you've got a student film, a budget film that, I mean, of good quality, but obviously not Hollywood standard. And the composer has written this Hans Zimmer style, huge epic score with all the best samples and all works incredibly. And it really doesn't work with the visuals because the visuals are 
sort of lower budget and the music sounds really high budget. So be respectful to the image that you're working with. If the film you're working on looks low budget, try to keep your music a little simpler as well. So it actually seems like they may have been able to pay for real instruments. If you can trick the listener into thinking that the instruments are real, you're halfway there. If straight away they hear, no way, they haven't spent £100,000 recording with an orchestra. Why is this happening? You're really going to put the listener off. So work with the visuals you've got. So we're going to stay quite simple with the music for this film. We're going to look at part two in a separate video. So I'll see you there. Hello and welcome back. Last time we looked at the first half of this little section with our violin introduction, string introduction. We're now going to look at the second half of the clip where we move towards him walking towards our female character. So I'm going to stick a little bit with the pattern we've got. We've, we have this C major 7 to F major 7 kind of feel hinted at in the strings. Remember, we don't give away all of the information when we're working with film music. But we kind of have this pattern. These are the two chords that we're moving between. The opening had this slight mystery to it. It was really slow. So I'm going to, at bar 16, just bring in a little bit more pace as we move towards the female character. And all I'm going to do to do that is use an instrument that has a bit more of attack to it, which is a piano. Change the pattern of the chords a little bit and create a little theme. So off camera, I had a little play around with the notes and I think something like this might work well. Again, it doesn't give away all of that information. It's a little softer. So we'll just, again, play it and watch along, see how it works. I'll just capture the last couple of string notes. You can see where they start in the MIDI preview. I've got my metronome on again, so I know I'm working in time. I think that fits really well, so let's go for a recording of it. Inevitably, you play it perfectly when it's not recording, and then you record and it goes horribly wrong. But let's have a go. I'm happy with that. It's soft, works well. At this stage, I might have a look through and see if there's any notes that really stand out that need changing in terms of velocity without the metronome on. You notice I use syncopation again. So I think this note was too loud. Did you hear that? just jumps out above the rest. So we use T and then we look for velocity tool and we can just drag this down a little bit. It's a bit softer. And those little details are quite important because if I'd have left that note as it was, there's suddenly this loud note that just creeps out from the rest of the soundtrack and again, takes away from what's happening on screen which we don't want to do. The next thing I want to look at is the actual run logo. We talked about making a bit of a point of that, which is there, bar 20. We, do you remember we set the tempo to perfectly match with that, bar 20? So what can we do to heighten that? Simply, we can bring the strings back in from earlier. So if we see, 
as we come to about 20, just really subtly. Just one note on the top of the strings is really going to add a lot. And also means we have a bit of sustain that we can stop dead on that bar 22 so we can heighten the ending of the scene as well. So let's have a go with that. Just record that in. So I, had, I actually had the click off on that recording, but it's fine because the piano has a bit more rhythm to it so I can work out where the pulse was, as well as watching the locator. I actually think that string line's a little too low. I think it will work a lot better if it's higher. It's a bit more out of the mid area of the range. It's a little less distracting. And if we make it a bit quieter as well, it'll just be really subtle. Again, bring up our velocity tool. TV on the keyboard. At velocity 5, almost as quiet as, it, quiet as it goes. Have a quick listen. So again, we could use a dynamic swell to bring it up and end. And that will work really nicely. We talked about those hit points. They don't have to be huge monumental things happening at these points. They can be really subtle, almost subconsciously affecting the listener. The final thing I want to add is the theme for our female lead, which, if you remember, went something like... So we need to think about an instrument that's going to work for that. We use the guitar harmonics for our male lead. So really we want something different for our female lead. Something with a bit of subtlety to it. Obviously piano is taken because there's a part here on piano. You've got to think about what's possible. And likeliness of piano player playing this bottom line won't be able to play the lead line. Even though we're not working with real piano player, we do have to try and think realistically. It's not often you'd have two pianos on a recording. So we can try and find something else. Maybe something mallets that's kind of similar to a piano. I've always had a soft spot for marimba, which is a bit of an odd instrument as well. So you're adding a bit of uniqueness to your score as well when you start using odd instruments. It might be a little bit too much, but in the mixing stage, we could soften it a little bit, make it really quiet. Let's see how it works anyway. Might not, who knows. So we see we fitted that in just between those piano lines. So there's, we filled that silence. So where the silence happens, our, piano, our marimba start part plus starts. That top note's probably a bit quiet. Make sure it fits. And again, just as in with the string part in the last video, we've got another string line starting at the exact same time as this marimba. Just line that up, we can see where it is. So we've got this line here on the piano part. So we could probably bring that forward a little bit, see where it fits. Remember, we do have, we do have to make sure it fits with a pulse. So I think removing the syncopation, putting that on the beat is going to work well. I think we've got a subtle but nice little introduction there. Again, watching it back and forward, you always have to go back and forward as you're watching these scenes. You get to a point where you can, you watch the movie. If you ever actually go to the premiere of the movie, other people are different. Personally, I feel really strange, really self-conscious because you're so used to the music and that's all you can focus on. You, you don't really know how the film works with the music. As I said before, the best film music is silent, so you're not even aware of it almost impossible when it's your own music, it's all you're listening to. 
Uh, let's have a look with the movie a bit bigger and see how our music works. So we need a little bit of imagination watching that. It's still early, we still need to do the mixing. This transition between the string parts and the pianos is a bit clunky, but once you've got a nice heavy reverb on the strings, which you'll need to have to make the string sound realistic, that transition should work better. This comes with experience, just knowing how things work, so practice. Also, I noticed on listening back there, that string part was really high, sorry, really loud. So if we just locate that, so T for tool, B for velocity, turn that one down, should be really subtle again. But that's all I noticed watching that that I didn't think worked well. Obviously there's loads of different approaches. Tom's going to take you through arranging this, putting it onto better samples, bringing in the dynamic automation so you can get the swells. So we'll have a bit more information in this section with some dynamic swells. Likewise at the end a bit of a swell before this final cut off and you'll really see it all come to life in the mix stage. But this stage that it's at now is perfectly reasonable for a pre-mix. I know when listening through it sounds very basic. Once you start mixing it, it will work. It'll come to life in the mix. Hope you've enjoyed the process of composing. The next stage, mixing stage, as I said, really exciting. It all comes together. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you'd like to continue learning with us, be sure to check out our film music course. To gain access to this course for only $10, check the link in the description below. Full price is $120. So thank you again for watching this video and we'll talk to you soon.